Good afternoon, evening everyone. Um, the parts from Kawasaki have turned up today while I was taking the engine up to the engine builder. I will have a video at some point for what we're doing or what we've done with the engine at the builders. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to complete that video um, after it's been built as well so we know what we were thinking of doing and what we, were, uh, what we did do. It all depends uh, what we find. Um, luckily enough, we won't. Hopefully enough, we won't find too much because the engine sounds sweet, except for when you put it under load, and that's when you get the rattling, which uh, indicates to me that there's um, a rattle on that chain again, which was the same thing. I didn't take it off to have a look, but um, my engine builder Kev will have a good look at that and sort that out. Um, I say I've got a few parts here to fit tonight. The under tray came, the new one, uh, the um, swing arm bearings came, it was all good. The swing arm, it's like a collar, a threaded collar came, um, which I couldn't find, was missing amongst the year of uh, this bike being stripped. The, uh, we had a couple of um, engine mount uh, collars and new nuts have come, which you say you recommend you change the nuts when you change engine in and out. I have on my drag bike took them in and out a few times with the same nuts and bolts um, partly because the um, I check them regularly on the drag, drag bike. The headstock bearings have come and a lot of little different stickers that I have got for the bike for when I put all the panels on um, for the front fenders, the tank, um, all over the bike. I've, pretty much they've all come. The two um, handlebars have come. I had one bent one, but when I was looking at the other one, I wasn't too keen on how uh, the thread was on it. So it must have had a bit of a jolt and probably stripped a little bit of the thread. You see my wife in the background there. <laughs> She's wondering who I'm talking to, I'm talking to myself. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start fitting them all tonight and I will then, um, what I'll do is a short clip of the video of what's what and what goes where. Uh, and what they're used for so you can identify the parts yourself if you ever needed to change anything. Right, I'll catch you up shortly. Hi again. Now here's the parts I was telling you about. As we can see, we have one large under tray, as I say it was a big piece, and we have I've ordered the top um, right hose because I actually borrowed the old one and cut it down for my drag bike to try to replace that. So that's the that's the only part. To go with that, we have some some well nuts in various places on there. There's well nuts, and they, uh, obviously you think they'd cut and supply it with the part, but they don't. Everything's pretty much um, <laughs> extras more than anything. This is the top. If I, if I can get it up on the floor, where's it gone? We'll have to roll the further point away from me. Right, that is the top engine mount collar which as I was saying you screw that fully in and then when you put the the, the thingy through it's like an allen key as you see in there then that bolt the, the, the engine mount bolt fits into that allen key then you screw it out and then that pushes against the side of the frame this is the top one that I was telling you was missing we've got that as well through uh, also comes to point about engine mounts again I have two collars washers whatever you want to call them and the two to replace on that particular side of things. For the swing arm, this is the threaded collar that I was saying was missing. Basically, this goes on from the right hand side of the engine that screws into the swing arm because you screw it fully out so you can get the swing arm out as you see the space there. Then you screw that fully in, pushes up tight against the swing arm. Um, as I say, what fits in there is the the Allen key, the, the bar the bar that goes through there is an Allen key again. But if you don't have that size Allen key, which is rather large, the Allen key for this one, right, will fit inside the bar, which has got an Allen key for that one. So then you will take your size of your Allen key dramatically down to that size, which is normally, in, normally, in most normal Allen key sets. As I say, this bar will fit inside 
that bar. And that one key itself in when it finds the place, and then that will draw them together. Um, so that's that for the swing arm. Now these bearings, which is a few of, four of there, were for the bottom. I'm not sure what they actually call it. You can uh, message me and let me know. You see the bottom of your swing arm, uh, uh, your shuffle door, with that funny uh, knuckle type uh, joint thing where everything's bolted to, where the shock's bolted to it, the dog bones as we call them uh, to it, and it's to the frame. Now these are the bearings for that, which I had ordered, but the ones in it are fine, so I will be keeping them for either replacements on my drag bike or replacing of the road bike as it goes along. And we have the little seals that go with it, so that's all that. These, these three are needle bearings that go in the swing arm. We have, I'm not sure if these are actually for that, the, until I start fitting them, we will know that could well be for one side of that. The, no, they won't be. No, they won't be. They'll be for them again as well. Right. We'll have one for one side there, seal for one side. Now, on the other side, we have, I think we have two of them on one side, and we'll have one on the other side because on the other side, we have a proper roller bearing in there with a big seal and there's also a snap ring that goes in as well to secure them and then there will be this spacer for the uh, swing arm as well so we'll go with that moving up we have top and bottom headstock bearings now these are like um taper rollers for the race that you actually knock in the top and you have one knock in the bottom of the, the headstock itself and then the other one actually has to knock onto the shaft of the um oh, I can get my words out the shaft of the someone help me out here. Oh thank you for me in a headstock top yoke the shaft that goes through through the top yoke. Sorry, terrible. This it looks like a spacer to me, but it's also got a little bit of rubber on it, which is a seal. That sits on the bottom of your yoke, as I was saying, and then the race sits down on top of that. As I say, one, the bottom one, or whichever way around you do it, you'll find, you will soon know when we start fitting them, which one sits on where, or sits. Yeah, the big one will go inside the thingy, the bottom one with the bearing on, will be the one where we sit on that uh, for the top half, we have this, which is a seal. What we also have, which is still on the yoke, which is not the wrong, it's like a castle style nut um, thing, where you can get a uh, thing. So your sister knows what thing these are. And that will um, help, that's how with the dust, dust seal, and also oil seal, grease seal. I normally use the, is it LM, Thingy wheel bearing grease for that sort of stuff. Obviously, the the yokes have to be set at a certain pressure because if you make too loose, they will fail the MOT. Too tight, you'll be hard to turn steering. So, um, trying to get the right center. And normally, when I put new ones in, you will, will have to recheck them later on because they will slowly bed in to the uh, into the where they will end up sitting. Um, they're not really obviously a high speed bearing because there's only for the steering um, and the same with the swing arms really not really high speed bearing because that's just for rotation up and down more than anything we have now both handlebars which are threaded obviously both ends one for the weight and one where you screw it into the the top um i'm going to say top yoke but it's weird you, you've got a top yoke and then you have like it's like a clip on but it bolts to the top yoke rather than clips to the side of the fork sanction we have various stickers for various different applications for the bike which i thought i'd order while i remembered and we have the seals where i was saying i had two missing so i ordered four new ones anyway for the throttle bodies and 
and that might be the first thing I will do before I forget about it and then I can tighten at least them up properly um, for the bottom, uh, the bottom rubbers of the throttle bodies. Right, I'll get off and I will fit what I can fit and then I'll get back to explaining to you what I've done, uh, how difficult it was and how I had to do it. Alright, just a quick note, this is the side with the, cha uh, the chain side. You have two of the needle valves going here, but as you can see, just about down there, if it will focus in, there is a stop. So the two needle valves will go as far as that, and then they will stop, um, and then you put in the little seal that is on the side. Also on this side, it would be that spacer, that uh, like top hat type spacer I was telling you about. Now I am going to try and start using an old crash bung to tap it in so far and then I've got a socket, a one inch socket that you see there fits perfectly all the way around the rim of the bearing so to try not to damage the bearing. To make things easier you can put all your bearings in a freezer because as I say metal expands with heat but if you put it in a freezer and the ice cold you can get them in there. Other people with certain jobs will heat the, the part up that it needs to go in, but you can't do it with these things because you'll burn the paint off and etc. So put them in the freezer will help. Right, I'm going to try and crack on with this. Hi, as you can see, sorry for the delay in speaking, the first needle bearing is in down to the bottom. I would I like to knock the first one all the way down without putting the next one in because if you're trying to knock two against each other you've got twice the grip to, to, to knock against um, as you see it's in it does roll okay the hardest part was a little bit of paint on the inside to get past once it initially gone that past that bit it was fine as you see it's peeled some of the paint off really should have had this probably powder coated would have been a bit tougher but it was cheap and cheerful at the time uh, trying to keep costs down so um, that's the way it went. Uh, hopefully, you well, you won't see that particular part of the bike as well. So I'm going to knock the other needle bearing in and show you how far they actually sit down before putting the seal on. Hi, right, as you can see, both needle valves, needle valves, needle bearings are in, sitting side by side. As you knock the second, uh, first one and the second one in, when you get to where it comes to the stop. There is a distinct change in tone. Now you do have to hit them quite hard, um, so don't be afraid to do that. Um, and if if you do have a problem to do, um, you can knock them out from the other side with the same stock socket on a long extension bar. That's how I actually got them out. And uh, the first one is always a difficult one to get out, so I always take the other side out because the big bearing comes out a bit easier. You can knock that out with a smaller socket straight through the centre of here to to the side. Sound a bit Yorkshire or Lancashire that. Um, and then you can try, you can get, because um, you're damaging them on the way out, you can get a smaller socket to go through rather than the inch socket that's fit to fit, perfect fit inside there. And you can knock them, um, but you have to keep moving the socket into a different position and you're knocking it through from the other side. Now the seal will go in there and then the little top hat goes on that side, normally on assembly. So I'm going to put the seal in here now. Um, I'm going to just refer to the manual a bit to see how far the seal needs to be pushed in, whether it needs to be pushed all that way uh, in. Um, I think if I don't push it all that way in, what will happen is when I tighten it up, it will try and push it in and buckle the seal. So I will tap it all that way through. Um, and, you know, otherwise you could be asking for trouble. As you can see the seal is now in and this little top hat we call it will go in there just give you a secure uh, side of um, pressing it through and then um, well to mount it up really you know just sort of make sure you're not pressing on the seal of the bar. The bar goes through from the other side so the threaded side comes out on this side and I will uh, show you that now just quick pause this and I will get back to you show you how the bar comes through push through a little bit further than uh, normal just to give you an idea as I say it comes through that way um, I haven't put the bearings on the other side yet which I will be doing next 
and there is an insert piece that goes straight straight through the center um, which then keeps the diameter of the but well, it sits in those um, needle valves uh, needle valves I'm saying it again needle bearings and we do put a bit of grease on that shaft as we put it in and it should keep it well greased for hopefully with these seals in a lot lifetime as you need it there's very rarely a swing arm bearings tend to go um, they used to put grease, nip grease nipples on swing arms years ago so you could keep them greased up they seem to have done away with them on this particular machine so they're quite confident that um, your seals will hold them and also in periodic services especially if you do dealer servicing we'll check to see how the seals are if the seals look at any um, damage or disarray um, if they can get into them um, they can only tell by play first if you've got a bit of too much play in it or it feels gritty on movement then there's a sign that the grit got into the seal somewhere hi as you see the needle bearing is now in now before we put the outer bearing on, which is this bearing, we need to put the centre shaft in because you cannot get it in unless you've left the seal off on the other side, which is uh, sometimes advised if you wanted to do a uh, double check and grease both sides. Um, I'm going to put some grease in from the other side, but that centre shaft needs to go through and straight through. I'm not going to do push it all the way through just yet. Uh, because I need to put a little bit of grease on it before I push it through. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of grease on each bear and on two on the other side and one on this side. Once that shaft is in, you can then put, knock the other bit, that bearing through. And what I would advise again is getting a socket that is big enough to fit the outside diameter of that. You want to be hitting the outside edge of it, not the inside edge. If you hit the inside edge, you will, will damage the bearing you'll be putting strain on the ball bearings in there so I would uh, strongly advise to find a socket that will fit the outside if you can't find a socket to fit the outside get the biggest socket you've got and then um, tap it around the edge in circular motions and do not hit it too much too hard on one side or the other because if it goes in too skewy you might find it difficult to straighten it back out again as you see whoop, as you see um that is where uh, bearing is in now the collar the uh, shaft is inside there as well which then takes up the play of your main shaft that will go through the center i've took some of the paint off from inside there to make it ease of use as i say that will go in there like that i'm going to put the snap ring in next you need a, what you call an inside um pliers to uh, circular pliers which i have here um it was a lot easier doing it with that, otherwise you will have a bit of a trouble trying to get them in. People have, including myself in the past, tried using screwdrivers to get in each of the holes to pull it around. But when you try and pull it on this side, uh, with the whole side, the other side will end up popping out um, until it's a bit fiddly. So uh, set up a set of pliers, not cheap, not dear nowadays. You should be able to get a set that will do the job quite easily on this particular thing. I'm going through this step by step rather than just showing you what I've done partly because um, it's quite a finicky and can be quite a pain in the butt job to do um, as I say I'm going to put the snap ring in and then I'll put the seal in on this side as you see the seal is now in now this threaded collar as I call it threads through the frame and it sits in and it pushes onto that bearing now that bearing can't go far because it pushes against the swing arm on the inside and the snap ring stops it from coming out of this way so that pushes on the center and obviously on the other side of it as I was saying about banging on the center you have the shaft that goes all the way through to the other needle bearings the other side and then that other top hat style collar on the other side so there's no way uh, even doing it as tight as you can you're going to damage the bearings inside because they are all braced from every direction possible. Um, next I'm going to be doing is the bottom there we need to put a couple of needle valves in and needle um, valves, I'm saying needle valve again, needle bearings in and two seals one either side and then the swing arm will be in a position to be able to put into the, into the frame and 
um, the shock absorber and, and vice versa. So I will do them next. Oh, a coincidence, well, coincidences, and it's quite handy, is the size of the, the socket I used for knocking that bigger bearing in was a 32 mil socket, which is actually the size of the socket you need to get the rear uh, spindle off. So um, if you've got a socket set, you need to be up to at least a 32 for the size of that. Um, I think 32, may well be the biggest size you need on the bike. I think the top headstock nut is a 32 as well. I will let you know as I come to do that. Uh, on some bikes, I think it's a 36. I know on some higher boosters are 36 because a friend of mine keeps asking for a 36 mil socket. The only time I used a 36 mil socket was originally on the ZX12 top um, nut for the um, headstock or top headstock, uh, top uh, yoke nut. Um, I think it's a 32 on this, looking at it from there, but I will let you know when I come to do that bit. Right, right, now both um, needle bearings are in and both seals are in, and again, as again, there's a centre shaft that goes through the middle, which actually sits through the seals on this one as well, which then your lower, uh, where your, your dog bones will then bolt in through that. Um, I have the bolt and everything for it, obviously and I, I'm in the position to put this on, except for the fact I need to put my chain guard back on again. Now, uh, I did order a new one, because it was a bit rammy and I'm, but I'm, it's not turned up yet, so I'm gonna have to put the old one on. Hopefully, I will be able to get to it to change it to the new one when it turns up, but sometimes you can't, because they're all one piece, you go over the top and round, but then again, I will keep it for another day, if need be. Hello everyone. Now, as you see, the engine is in. Um, the way I did it is I put the bottom engine mount in, which you saw me do earlier, and the engine flopped forward, so I managed to do a few bits and bobs on it. And then I had to put the rubber covering on, so if it's soundproof and I think more than anything, so I make it a bit quieter, the engine and that. I'm not too sure why they've done this, because you'd think it'd overheat more. But no, it's not too bad. Um, Thought bodies I put in and bolted them up at the bottom. Um, and I connected behind the back of here, there is a coolant sensor. Um, there, just about to see where we've got there, it needs to be plugged in. There's that plug there. Another plug that comes this way, you can just about see me waving it there at the end. That one will connect to the crank sensor. And also what came through was the oxygen sensor as well. That came through from that side of the room. Otherwise everything connected to the other side, except for this valve. You have four um, vacuum pipes that go into each one of the throttle bodies. And that actually adjusts on modern machinery uh, your tick over accordingly. You don't, necessarily, you don't really have a tick over screw on these. There is a screw on the other side which can be done in, in extreme conditions, like my Desert 14 drag bike uh, wouldn't idle perfectly even with this because it was that highly tuned. I had to, to, to turn the idle up a bit to be slightly, because I do have it slightly higher on my drag bike. Instead of it ticking over around about 1000 RPM, I set to about 1500 15, RPM because uh, there, was, there was a state of the tune more than anything. So that was put in. I also put the hot, top small water hose pipe which goes through the engine and down the other side, ready to the bottom of the expansion bottle. That was fitted in. Um, and then what I did, once all uh, they were all on, I sort, of, I sort of lowered the frame down over the engine, put this engine mount in, two at the top there, and one here, there we go. And once that one was in, it made it easier to put this one in because it was almost in place where it had uh, it needed to be. You can, if you want, put the other side on as well, but I'd leave it, I'd leave, I'd leave the bottom one, I'd loosen the bottom one off again from the frame, you know, that collar that screws up with the left hand thread. I'd loosen that off until you've got that in properly. Once that's all the way through, then you can tighten them up, which is left hand thread, and then on the other side is a nut. And because you've tightened this up tight to the frame, 
and if you tighten the knot the other side it will basically it will turn that left if it was going to turn and because it's turning left it'll go up against the frame so when you tighten the other nut up you don't necessarily need an allen key in the side to hold it which makes it a little bit easier so i did all that so as i say we're all in there i also what i did notice as well there is like a bit of soundproof padding thing in the battery tray the battery compartment which i forgot to put in so i took all that back out again and put that back in just finding these bits as i go along um so that was that for tonight um and i will get back to you tomorrow night with more